Hello and welcome to this Bioprocess International Ask the Expert webcast. I'm your host, Leah Rosen, the online editor for Bioprocess International. Before we get started, just a couple of notes. This webcast is being recorded and will be made available for replay in the multimedia section of our website. We've muted the audio lines, but we welcome you to type in your questions for our speaker in the chat window on your screen. After the presentation, we will begin the question and answer portion, and I will ask our speaker your questions from the chat window. Your questions in the chat window will only be visible to myself and our speaker. So thank you for joining us today. It is now my pleasure to introduce our speaker, Jan von Hauerman from Movizio. Hello, good, uh, good morning and good afternoon for everyone. Thanks for joining um, the webinar. So today we will be talking about the um, automation and monitoring um, of CAR T cells. For people who do not know who, who or what Ovisio exactly is and does, so Ovisio is a Belgian company uh, reaching its 10th university at the end of uh, this year. Uh, we are very much focused on our own R&D, so more than 50% of staff is still in R&D, hardware and software. A lot of the applications uh, are built in-house. The main focus or, or our main market is in bioprocessing, where we have top applications in cell and gene therapy and in uh, recombinant proteins, um, where the focus is mainly vaccine. We are starting up a small affiliate in the US, which should be completely started in 2020. In Europe, we are working together with a couple of partners for distribution uh, on the right hand side of the screen, you can see the management. Today we will be talking about two of our products that are on the market and that are specifically um, built for uh, CAR-T with the iLine app and the QMOP. Both of these products use OS1 software and built in-house uh, that is combined with the machine learning platform. Here you can see in a quick infographic where our products actually can improve your process. The main focus of today will be the iLine F, uh, which is capable of the inline closed loop monitoring of your T cell culture uh, during the expansion step and as well during uh, transduction and activation. The QMOD is more used in earlier or later stages. The iLine F as you can see on the website, um, or as some of you might know already or have seen already, uh, it's currently undergoing a very big update. Uh, we are moving towards complete CGMP uh, compliancy. You will see in the, in the image the alpha version that is already a working version and being used in a couple of labs. Uh, and in the middle, you see an image of the final design. Uh, which has been concluded and will be on the market uh, in 2020, early 2020. The idea of the iLine F still is the same as with the current version, and that is that uh, it enables you to take 1,200 images a day um, of your cells and of your culture, and it uses machine learning algorithms for a robust and reliable uh, cell counting and phenotyping uh, analysis of the cell. It can as well be connected to a wide range of bioreactors thanks to our single-use probe and the software is CFR21 Part 11 uh, compliant. Uh, the reason why we do that is that we believe that to have high quality, um, a high-quality product, you need to be sure that your starting material of the process is of high quality as well. Uh, and that's what will be possible by using the iLine F. So the iLine F actually comes with the BioConnect. The BioConnect is a single-use probe that uh, takes care of the connection of your cell culture vessel with the, um, with the microscope. Um, and it actually guides the cells through a closed serial loop to the microscope where the images are taken, and then it goes back in the, into the back um, or, or into the cell culture vessel. So it's a single-use probe. Uh, single-use device, gamma sterilized in a closed loop system that ensures a continuous flow, and in the end, there is no loss of sample volume. So all cells and all samples that are going to the microscope go back um, 
into the back. So the microscope itself and the BioConnect, the development is reaching the phase that we will comply with, with all cell therapy requirements when it comes to CGMP. So we have a reduced footprint with an embedded uh, PC. The Highline F contains both a pump, a computer, a touch screen, uh, and an interface uh, for the BioConnect. Um, it's also possible, thanks to OPC, to have a fully automation with external systems. It's possible to connect to external systems. The software is CFR 21 Part 11 compliant. Uh, the main setup that we use to communicate with other platforms and with other software and, uh, and or servers and SCADA systems is OPC. Um, I won't go into much detail around this, so if you have questions on OPC, feel free to contact me afterwards. Um, this is a nutshell, what we have and, and what, is, what is possible. Now, if we go to the technology itself, it all starts with images. And when we are talking about images, what we take or what we do uh, are actually 3D holographic images. And 3D holographic images is basically as a combination of two images. Uh, you see an intensity or bright field image. This image allows you, us to uh, see and, and identify some features and characteristics of a cell, but of course not so many as we are completely uh, label free and um, we are not using any stains or reagents. We do not touch anything of the cell. The bright field uh, image does not provide us with uh, a lot of information. We get a lot more information from the phase contrast image and, of course, from the 3D holographic image. So the, the phase contrast image uh, you see on the right, at the right uh, corner of the screen, and then the 3D holographic image um, you see on the bottom left. The 3D holographic image, that's uh, where we get a lot of um, information related to the shape and the volume of uh, the cell. On top of those three images, there is also a refocusing feature, uh, which means that it, for us it is possible that the cells floating around in the flow cell when we are taking images, uh, and even when they are a little bit above or below the focus plane, um, it is possible for us to put them post-acquisition back into focus, which means that when you see an image uh, basically, all the cells in that image will be in focus, and when all cells in focus, that leads to high quality uh, image, which in, in turn leads to a high quality um, analysis. Uh, and high quality analysis leads to um, robust and reliable results. Everything starts, of course, with the image, um, but what we do with the image is uh, actually even more important. Uh, in the image, the algorithms that are built with a machine learning system rely on the analysis of single cells. So all the cells within an image are uh, analyzed individually, and that is based on a combination of 70, 70 characteristics on a single cell level. Those characteristics, there are some subcategories in that, so there are a lot of morphological characteristics that are, that are being taken into account uh, for the algorithms, like the diameter, the cell perimeter, the circularity, membrane integrity, uh, and so on. But on top of that, we see uh, or we have access to um, a lot of optical phase texture and intensity texture uh, characteristics of, of the single cell, which allows us to dig a lot deeper um, and, and to um, get a lot more information on a single cell besides just the cell count and the viability. I've discussed already, or, or I touched already a couple of times, the subject of machine learning. So for people who are unfamiliar with machine learning methodology uh, and, and how you can create algorithms via machine learning, uh, this is a small, um, easy to understand uh, infographic on machine learning. So basically, when we design a new algorithm, and that can be as we did in the beginning, as easy as an um, algorithm for viability or what we're trying to do now, as difficult as finding small, uh, phen almost phenotypical differences between cells, it always starts with the creation of a learning set or a training set. Um, a learning set or of a training set basically is a, a 
pool of images uh, where we are pretty sure that all the cells within those images belong to one population. And that population can be a population of viable cells, it can be a population of uh, dying cells, it can be a population of infected or transduced cells, or it can be a, po a population of uninfected or untransduced cells. When we have defined those uh, populations, uh, we let the machine learning algorithm know, the machine learning platform know, okay, so now you have images of cells in status A and cells in status B. Um, please find within the holographic fingerprint if you can see any differences. When that is the case, and uh, when, when you're looking at 70 characteristics on the single cell level, it is the case quite often that you find differences um, between two populations, uh, then we start with the validation of that algorithm. And that happens with system training. And system training basically means that we start providing to uh, the platform images where there is a mixture of the population and increasing difficulties. So from 90% from uh, status A to, and 10% status B, all the way up to 50-50. And that's how the system and the algorithm get trained. And in the end, there is uh, the prediction algorithm, or basically the algorithm that's provided to uh, the market and to the customers to really um, be used in the laboratory. That is all in the background. What is it, what you see, what you get in the lab? In the lab, uh, you see, of course, in the software, uh, your cells, the images of your cells. So that's the big um, image in the middle. On the left side, you see all the individual data points uh, during one uh, run. So one process uh, combines uh, data points almost as uh, almost continuously, but in, in practice, it means every 30 minutes, um, the software will generate a new data point where uh, you will get all your data uh, of that specific data point. This can be viability, it can be the viable cell density, the total cell density, uh, the percentage of activated cells, like in this example. And then on top of that, we automatically generate the graphs that will represent uh, how um, the culture is moving over time. So in this case, the uh, uh, viability uh, goes up and uh, the percentage of activated cells goes up. Um, and all the cells uh, are by software marked um, by their status. So in, in, in here, uh, in this example, the green dots represent the viable cells, the blue dots um, represent the activated uh, cells, and a red dot will activate a dead or a dying cell. Um, of course, we have compared our technology to um, a lot of current reference methods uh, in first place for viability and cell count. So we have done a lot of experiments. Most of them were working with a wave bag or rocking motion bag, um, two liter expansion bag with a one liter working volume. There were some slight variations around that, um, but in general, it was the same principle, the same uh, ID, uh, all working with CAR T cells, where the cells were grown for a number of days. Depending on the process, uh, it was somewhere between three and seven days. The goal was, of course, to continuously monitor the CAR T cells in the bag and count and discriminate the viability uh, with strong correlation of an offline reference method. Could be a device from Beckman Coulter, could be a device from Thermometec, could be basically any uh, method that um, at that point was being used by uh, one of our customers. And you see that the automated uh, so the reference method mainly automated cell counters, making use either of triton blue or acridine uh, orange plus dapi staining. Uh, and we see that there is a very strong correlation between the VCD, TCD, and viability data uh, performed by those uh, methods, taking into account that those methods require manual sampling and having uh, a sample moment only once, maximum twice a day instead of continuously. Um, showing a very strong correlation. Um, what is probably even more interesting is that the Island F is perfectly capable of accurately monitoring the difference in different processes. So if you have, if you have um, of course, you have different donors uh, when talking about autologous um, CAR-T processes, but as well within um, or between companies or even within um, companies, you have different processes for different products. 
uh, it's perfectly possible to um, to monitor the differences between the processes, to keep track of differences, and to do that in a very reliable and robust way. Uh, in this case, the red dots uh, are the sample points and, and the data points generated by uh, the offline measurements, the reference data, and the blue lines represent the results generated by um, the ILAN F and OS1. For the last couple of slides, I have um, some interesting topics where we go beyond the um, measurement of just viability and total foul count. Um, as you can see here, it is possible to differentiate subpopulations within um, within your CAR T um, culture. Uh, in this particular case, you can see that it is perfectly possible to track uh, small contaminants. In this case, it's uh, it's beads that are being used by by numerous of our customers to activate T cells to keep track of the beads in culture, to count the beads, and to differentiate them from cell debris to differentiate them from cells um, and and to mark them correctly. Um, and, and that way you can keep track of the ratio beats against um, against cells um, and see if the culture is really growing uh, or not. This another point we are working on and that is already on the market and being used is a tracking of the activation status of T cells. So again here the blue Cells, the cells marked in blue uh, are cells that underwent an activation, and um, it's, it's possible to just count the activated cells or count the amount of activated cells within, um, within a culture. So to conclude, um, I can only say that the island F meets the needs of uh, cell and gene therapy manufacturing, so it's an inline system, and in real time, it's a closed system. There is, um, it's automated, so it's a completely walk away. You start it when you do the inoculation. You come back um, when you're ready to go to downstream processing. Uh, it's completely labor free. We just use the images that we uh, take with the microscope. Uh, no need to um, have um, to have the use of stains or reagents or fluorescent uh, um, dyes. Uh, and thanks to the machine learning, it's possible to um, differentiate subpopulations within a CAR T um, culture. Of course, that leads to increased automation, increased reproducibility, increased product characterization, which uh, causes to, de to for a decrease in costs and a decrease in, in manual steps. Uh, then I would like to mention some of our reference customers. Not all of them are in CAR-T. Uh, we are working on vaccines as well. Um, if you have more questions, I'm, a, I'm available for the next 10 minutes, but please feel free to reach out uh, or meet us at any of those uh, events uh, the next coming weeks. So thank you very much for your attention, and I'm happy to answer um, any of the questions you might have. Thanks, John. So the first question is, does your 3D holographic analysis help determine the phase of the cell cycle? Um, we, we have done some experience on the phase of, on the, phase of the cell cycle. Uh, it's not a finished algorithm yet, so there is still some work to do. Um, but it, it's, not, it's definitely not entirely impossible. Uh, I would say reach out to me to discuss some of those details uh, because it will lead us too far um, in, in, uh, on here. And since you have no dyes, what imaging factors are used to determine viability? Yes. Um, so there, there are some very specific um, characteristics that distinguish um, a viable cell from a dead cell. Um, one of the things, or the, one of the most easy to explain, is that a viable cell, which is nice and, and round, um, will create a refractive peak uh, when it's hit by light, while a dead cell or a dying cell that's losing the circularity and membrane integrity will diffract light when, when light hits, uh, hits the cell. And the difference between the refractive peak and the diffraction of a dying cell can be assessed by um, 
uh, by the algorithm, and, and that's how we can differentiate between a DEP and a FICO site. Okay, and just, it looks like we just have one question. If you haven't typed in your question, you can type them in now. Um, if we don't get to them on the talk, Jan will be able to follow up with you directly. Um, oh, it looks like we have a couple more questions, but um, I think this might be the last question we have time for, so we'll see. Um, if I understood correctly, the sample flows through and then goes back to the culture vessel bioreactor. How is sterility maintained? Yes, so the, um, the, the probe, which is in contact with the, um, with the cells and with the culture, uh, is completely um, sterile. So it's gamma sterilized, it's completely sterile. You connect it to a bag in a sterile way. We have multiple options, either welding or um, louver locks. Uh, th there are a lot of possibilities to think of. Uh, but once it's hooked, uh, you do not touch it anymore. And the cells do not leave uh, the probe or the bag. So there is no contact between the cells and the outside world. And that's how we um, keep the sterility in place. OK. If microbial contamination occurs, does the system detect it? Um, the short answer is no. Um, the, the longer answer is if it has really an effect on the cells itself, um, then we might pick it up. So cells will start dying, and, and we might pick it up a little bit earlier. But the magnification used by the microscope is um, not capable of detecting uh, or seeing uh, a bacteria or microbial contamination or infection. Okay. So these are great. I see a number of really great questions coming in. I think we do just have time for one or two more. So keep typing them in, um, and again, we'll pass this to Jean. Yeah. Okay. So would the technology be able to distinguish a virus infected cell? Yes. Um, when, when using, uh, and then we are talking about gene therapy and vaccine production, so when, when using viral vectors, one of the things that we, we are able to detect, uh, and we have more information on the website for, for that, uh, and a very nice use case, so SF9 and baclovirus, there we can really see a difference between an um, infected and a non-infected cell. The same goes, but th those algorithms are still in development, goes for hex out in combination with lentivirus or AAV. Okay. And this is the final question we'll be asking. Um, one of the key challenges in the cell therapy industry is scaling up production so many people can access the therapy. I understand that Online F can only monitor one bioreactor at once. Are there any plans to facilitate higher scales, either monitoring more than one bioreactor at once or a next generation product that can monitor tens of bioreactors at once? Um, as, as of now, it's indeed one on one. Uh, there are no plans to, um, to multiplex. Uh, so we reduced already the footprint quite drastically. Um, and, and we see that that is already a big solution and a big step forward. Uh, multiplexing our device um, creates a whole bunch of of other challenges. Um, I, I won't go into much detail at, at this uh, right now, but um, as we are working with very fine optics and very fine optical setups, as soon as you start to multiplex, you need those optics to be able to move around, uh, which combines with, um, with very high cost. Uh, and in the end, the cost of a multiplex device is much higher than the cost of uh, multiple one-on-one -on -one devices. Okay, well, thank you very much, Jan. You're welcome. It was a pleasure. And thank you to our audience for joining us. The recorded version of this webcast will be available for on-demand viewing on our website, and as a registered attendee, you'll receive a follow-up email providing you with a direct link. We look forward to having you join us at future Bioprocess International SC Expert webcasts. Look for those announcements in your inbox. Goodbye.